Hello friends, George Creamer here, Missional Instructor, and in this video I will show how the promises which began in Abraham in the Old Testament are fulfilled in Christ, who sends the church to spread the blessing to all nations. This video will be, will be divided into three sections. One, the beginning of blessing through Abraham. Two, the fulfillment of the blessing through Christ. And three, the spreading of the blessing through the church. For a more comprehensive study, a course is available at senttotheworld.org. So let's begin. The Apostle Paul describes the calling of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, as the gospel announced in advance to Abraham. And that's in Galatians 3, 8. The promise of blessing to Abraham was indeed good news, considering how the plans and purposes of God go sour in Genesis uh, chapters 3 through 11, and this was prior to Abraham's call. The extent of uh, humanity's brokenness and, and fallenness at this time was so severe that every intent of the thoughts in the human heart were of continual evil, that even the heart of God was grieved, and he was sorry to have made mankind. And we read that in Genesis 6, verses 5 through 6. The problems of sin and rebellion were so prevalent that the world became irrecoverable unless God intervened in a drastic way. The call of Abraham in Genesis 12 verses 1 through 3 is the turning point best described by Christopher Wright as the launch pad of his whole mission, which is to restore again the blessing of God given to humanity from the beginning. And that was in Genesis chapter 1, verses 28-29. God's call to Abraham is the answer to reverse the prevalent curse in which humanity brought upon themselves. Through Abraham, the blessing of God would be restored again, not only to him and his family, but unto the entire humanity. Now we move to the first part of this video, which is the beginning of blessing through Abraham. The root word bless with its different variations occurs five times in Genesis 12 verses 1 through 3, highlighting the main objective of Abraham's call. The first goal involved personal benefits for Abraham and his family. God would bless him with descendants and land, which would lead to a great and mighty nation. The second goal cannot be left out which can be argued is the reason why Abraham was called in the first place. God's love for the nations was at the center of the call of Abraham. Through him and his family, all the nations would be blessed. God's election of Abraham is unconditional, meaning there is no good reason for him to be elected besides grace alone. His call is also conditional, since the only way Abraham can be a blessing is by leaving and going which required blind faith and costly obedience. It required blind faith because he was called to an unknown land that God will later show him. It also required costly obedience since he needed to let go of everything that he valued in his life, including land, his people, and extended household. The promised blessing came with global responsibility as well. He and his family would not only be recipients, but the mediators of extending God's blessing to all nations. Only by a drastic new start and break from all of his ties and securities will Abraham be able to fulfill the task at hand. In other words, he needed to start over a new life, but under God's direction. Through Abraham and his descendants, God would raise a people to carry out his intended purposes on earth. Abraham obeyed God, left his land, and went to the land of Canaan. Abraham believed the promises that God in his mercy had made to him, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Be sure to check out these verses regarding the faith of Abraham. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great 
and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now we transition to part two. The fulfillment of the blessing through Christ. The promise to Abraham is fulfilled once and for all through his seed, which is Christ. It says in Galatians 3.16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, which is Christ. The book of Matthew opens with Jesus' Jesus's genealogy. He is described as the son of Abraham. The author clearly wanted to show the family connection between Abraham and Christ and make the point that Christ comes from the seed of Abraham. There is no break between the promise which began through Abraham, later fulfilled in Christ. Jesus not only continues the promise of Abraham and his descendants, but fulfills it. Through Christ's death and resurrection, he places mankind back on the path to blessing. This blessing would not be only for the Jews, but would also extend to the Gentiles, which is in line with God's heart for the nations throughout all of scripture. Faith in Jesus, not family descendants, would be the factor in determining who would receive the promised blessing. The blessing is God's forgiveness and grace. He justifies and imparts his righteousness to those who have faith in him. Christ opens the door to new life rather than death. Jesus is the good news, fulfilling all previous covenant promises of blessing to all who have faith in him. Through Jesus, both Jews and Gentiles received the blessing of God, which began and was promised to Abraham. As Galatians 3 verses 13 through 14 testifies, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is he who hangs on a tree so that in Jesus Christ the blessing of Abraham would reach the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Part 3. The Spreading of the Blessing Through the Church Though Jesus fulfills the promise of Abraham, the church spreads the blessing throughout the world as God's hands, feet, and mouthpieces. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus called his disciples to follow him. The disciples started the movement of God's people, who would eventually become the church. The church is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the people in which the presence of Christ dwells. By accepting his invitation, the first disciples would grow into a community of, believer, of believers who would serve as the vehicle through which God's blessing would reach the nations. Toward the end of his earthly ministry, the risen Jesus said to his disciples, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And we read that in John chapter 20, verse 21. The commission in John's gospel is intended for you and I even today. We continue the ministry which Abraham begun and Jesus fulfilled. We do this by inviting others to receive the blessing that only Christ can provide which is the forgiveness of sins and new life. Our election is not for our benefit only, but with the purpose of spreading the blessing of God's love and forgiveness to the end of the earth. You can't help notice the similarities between the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 19, where it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, and the commission to Abraham in Genesis 12, 1, when it says, Get up and go away from your land. In both accounts, it is necessary to leave and go and live and serve under the Lordship of Christ. Christopher Wright writes, But if in Christ we inherit Abraham's blessing, we also inherit Abraham's mission. That is, to get up and go and be a blessing. We accomplish this through making disciples of all nations, 
so that others can receive the abundance of life which God offers to those who believe in his name. And this blessing begins in this life, but will only be fully realized when Christ returns and establishes the new heavens and the new earth forever. For a more comprehensive study, a course is available at senttotheworld.org. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and visit our, our social media outlets. God bless.